Yeah, this video is incredibly long. What's going on you guys? It's Corbin. Uh, I thought I would do an interesting vlog today. I'm actually back home in my hometown where I grew up in and uh, I've been living with my parents for the past three days and I've been, you know, sleeping in my room that I used to sleep in as a kid and I actually came across some stuff that, you know, I played with as a kid, you know, some toys and uh, I came across my old comic book collection. This is our living room right here. So, this is where I play video games a lot. There's my old Wii and Xbox. Uh, this is my room right here. As you can see, there's a lot of toys and memorabilia. And there are some of my comics right here. I was a huge Marvel guy as a kid. I tried getting into DC a little bit, but DC, I, I don't know. I was more prone to Marvel, as you guys can tell from my Pixel Talk channel. Fantastic Four, love the comics. The movies are eh. Actually, they're terrible. What am I talking about? And here is my Spider-Man comic book collection. We're actually going to be taking a look at this today. These are the most amount of comics that I've collected, these Spider-Man comics. I felt like with Spider-Man Homecoming coming out, this would be the perfect time to look at these comics and just see what I've collected over the years. I'm a huge Spider-Man guy, so let's get started with this. Oh god, it's heavy. <laughs> it's so heavy. Moment of truth. Oh my god. So much memorabilia. A lot of these comics are from, I think, 2008 to probably 2014. And some of them are from the 80s because, like, my parents knew that I liked Spider-Man. And whenever they would go to a garage sale or a flea market, they would find some Spider-Man comics like this one. This is obviously from, like, the 90s. So that was really cool of them. They tried to increase my collection with, like, you know, Spider-Man comics from the 90s and stuff. I was more prone to reading modern day comics at the time because they're easier to read. If you notice with some comics from the 80s, like, there's a lot of dialogue, but with, like, modern day comics, they, they know how to, like, tone it down with, like, dialogue. Kind of like dialogue from a movie, sort of. So, let's take a look at these comics real quick. Okay, so I'm actually going to move these real quick. We're actually going to take a look at this box. Oh, God, it's so heavy. Ugh! Okay, so this is actually the Amazing Spider-Man collection that I have. Let's see. Um, this was the first comic that I ever saved. This was Amazing Spider-Man 545. This is the beginning of the, let's see here, it was the Brand New Day story arc. If you guys don't know the controversy behind this series, it was Spider-Man, like Aunt May, had been shot during the events of Civil War. So he made a deal with the devil to save her life, but he had to sacrifice him and NJ's marriage. So that was really controversial. And at the time, everybody in the Spider-Man universe knew Peter Parker's identity because he came out as Spider-Man for Civil War purposes. But then because he made a deal with the devil, he went back to having a secret identity. And one of the many things that I really appreciate about the Brand New Day story arc was it was three times a month. So that was cool that I got to read Spider-Man three times a month. That would have been like crazy for me to wait each and every month. I know a lot of comic books did that at the time. So that was cool that I had a weekly dose of Spider-Man. Oh uh, yeah. I am liking these comics so far. And like I said, that was the first one that I ever collected. So I started collecting comics after that moment. And even before that moment, this was the uh, Back in Black storyline where, you know, Aunt May was shot and he kind of had like a dark side moment a little bit. So there's that. There's that issue. Oh, and also this is him and the Kingpin because the Kingpin was responsible for shooting Aunt May. And this is like an issue showcasing that like Aunt May could possibly die. So th these were like really seriously toned Spider-Man comics. Like I, I started at like a really serious point and then it kind of went back to its uh, to its roots where Spider-Man was like, oh, let's just let's just go back to him having a secret identity and it being happy because this is getting really depressing So yeah, he like tried to Make a lot of deals with certain people. I think he like even talked to Dr. Strange at one point to see if he could save Aunt May's life and this right here. I think these are the villains that he's gonna be fighting in the 
uh, amazing Spider-Man video game. You know, there's a Spider-Man video game on PS4 coming out, and this is like the clan that he's fighting. He's fighting Mr. Negative, so that's gonna be really cool. Oh, this was a good issue as well. I'm just gonna, kinda what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be showing you the art of the comics, and maybe giving you my input on them a little bit. So, that's a cool little cover as well. Oh yeah, this is a new, uh, I guess, superhero they introduced. Jackpot. For the longest time, I thought this was MJ, but it turned out it wasn't her. So that was really interesting. And Menace, uh, this is like a version of Hobgoblin or Green Goblin. I couldn't exactly remember who was Menace. It's been such a long time since I've read these comics, but it was it was something that I, I always wondered, like, who was this guy? And we've got, this is a really cool cover of Spider-Man. I really like this a lot. So there's that. This was pretty cool. This guy, um, I can't remember his name, the supervillain, but he was a drug addict and he decided to take some form of drug, I don't know, and he became this guy right here. So that was a really interesting story arc. And uh, this right here, I like this, like, uh, I liked how he versed Wolverine. I'm not really a fan of this guy's art because it's like, Super wonky sometimes, and I don't know, just the art and everything, but he's, it's, it's good for the most part, especially like if you're dealing with kind of like that, um, wild action kind of look, it's okay. I think it would work better with Black Panther, but I don't know about Spider-Man, and here we go with the same art again. You know what I mean? It just makes Spider-Man look kind of skinny, and the lines are weird. It's just really... I don't know, urban looking. That's actually a really good word to use, urban. And then they went back to like this um, like cool art form. If you notice that every time when there's a different story arc in Spider-Man, they um, have like a different artist. So that's how they were able to do like three times a month is because they had like a different artist working on different stories and everything. So I thought that was really cool of them. Oh, and this is another super villain, Speedball. I thought this was a really interesting villain because this villain, what she did was that she actually recorded her super villainy. Like she posted on YouTube and everything. I, this was like kind of the first concept of live streaming. And if you see here, this is where they started promoting like, you know, their movies and their comics. So this comic right here was from 2008. So that's pretty crazy. And you know, we have that again. This is cool art. Right here, there we go. Oh, this is really cool as well, just this art. I thought that was pretty sweet. <laughs> I don't know how long this video is gonna be, guys. It's gonna be like, pretty long for the most part. I mean, if, I'm gonna try and speed through this real quick because I know I have a lot more comics that I gotta get to, but by God, this is so nostalgic just going through all these Spider-Man comics. And here we are back to this urban style. I don't know who the artist is. I'm just, I'm not a fan of this guy's work, but it, it's not bad or anything. It's just compared to everything else that I have, I really like that kind of Steve Ditko artwork, but this, this is just way too much for me. Um, this is kind of a cool, like, art right here. Oh, and I don't remember this storyline right here. It's like, I, I do remember it. It's just like, I don't remember what went into it. It was like Spider-Man had to be Daredevil for a little bit. Like it was like for just a couple days, not like for a long period of time, but like he put on the Daredevil costume and here's like Spider-Man and Daredevil. And I think that's Craven's daughter or something. So there's that. Oh, dude, this was like, so this is like one of my favorite, like, uh, covers. This is John Romita Jr.'s art, and um, it was like Spider-Man. I think he had the verse, yep, the, the Sinister Six, or something like that. And uh, the new Venom, the uh, the Scorpion Venom, where it was like the guy who used to be Scorpion, that was his Venom. And uh, I think Spider-Man, like, he got the symbiote back or whatever, I don't know. I can't exactly remember. But yeah, this is, this is really good art. I really like John Romita Jr.'s art because um, everything else... Like, when he does, like, Avenger-style artwork, uh, it's okay, but it's perfect for Spider-Man because it's that New York style, and this is a really cool cover. Like, I'm sure you guys have seen this cover uh, before online. This is um, Venom and Anti-Venom, and I believe this Anti-Venom, I think that's Eddie Brock, I'm pretty sure. 
And uh, let's see here. Green Goblin made a return. So that was really cool. Well, I like Green Goblin. And Bullseye, the uh, Daredevil villain that's right there. There we go. Green Goblin. Norman Osborn. There we go. Oh, and this was, a, oh my god, this is a really interesting, like, comic as well. So, uh, basically what this comic was, it was Flash Thompson, and it explained how Flash Thompson lost his legs. Uh, he was a U.S. veteran, and in order to save someone else's life, he, he was shot, like, a lot, especially in the leg area, and he took an adrenaline shot to save another soldier's life, but he ended up losing his legs. And this is, again, that same artwork. But this is really interesting because it kind of leads up to him becoming the new Venom, that soldier Venom at least. Oh yeah, I remember this. That's pretty, that's pretty sweet. Oh, and this is a issue where Spider-Man had to team up with the Punisher. Oh man, <laughs> I got so many comics that it's like sliding a little bit. And um, yeah, I think this is one where he had to like I think he was paired up with the Shocker. Yep, there it is right there. He was paired up with the Shocker, so that was a really interesting issue right there. And um, I think this is one of those issues where Mr. Negative started becoming a thing, like where everyone realized who Mr. Negative was. He was that Asian guy that ran the um, food place for the homeless people, the homeless shelter. I, I don't know why I didn't say homeless shelter. And... Um, there's Spider-Man. And this is when everyone started questioning the events of, like, um, One More Day and Brand New Day and what was changed and everything. Obviously, one of the things that was changed was, like, Harry Osborn came back from the dead. So that was something that they acknowledged sometimes was the changes that were afoot. I don't remember this guy. Was, was this, like, Molecular Man or whatever? I can't remember his name. I'm gonna start. A new, I'm gonna start a new pile because I think these like piles are like falling down. Um, okay, so this is uh, Spider-Man 583, and uh, that one's that one's all right. I don't know. That was an okay issue. I think 583 was the issue where they had like the Obama variant cover. I think I had the Obama issue, but it wasn't the first printing. Oh yeah, and this is where they started revealing who- I remember who Jackal was! It was this chick! Jackal was a female! I remember now! It, wait, not Jackal. God, what's- what's his name? Not- that isn't his name. It's not Jackal. But, it's this, uh, character- I- I- I can't remember the character's name. Um... Proto-Goblin? Not sure, honestly. So there's that. Menace! That's the name of the character. The character's name is uh, Menace. Yeah, and it was, um, it was the girl. There we go. Oh, dude. Yeah, this is just like, it, it's weird going back to these comics and everything because it's showing off like a lot of nostalgia and everything. John Romita Jr., I love his art. John Romita Jr. has like some amazing art. And uh, Return of the Spot, that's basically a supervillain that has the powers of the Portal video game. Th I like this cover too. This is, a re this is where the, the covers like, started getting really cool. Um, Fantastic Four. Uh, so, before the One More Day storyline, like, the superheroes knew of Spider-Man's identity. But, you know, after One More Day happened and Brand New Day started, like, this is where people started questioning who Spider-Man was. Enough is enough, who are you? Like, Human Torch was like, I remember what you look like, but I can't remember. So what's going on here? So this is where, like, everyone started questioning, like, Spider-Man and everything. And this was really weird, too, because, like, when he unmasked himself, like, then the superheroes remembered. So, like, if you saw, like, his face, like, in the Spider-Man costume or whatever, you, you remembered. So that, that was kind of weird. Oh, and this was, like, um, a storyline called 24-7. It was like the storyline where Spider-Man tried to spite J. Jonah Jameson, and he was Spider-Man for like the longest time. I don't know how he ate. It's weird. Um, yeah. So yeah, the, I, I, this is pretty good artwork too. 
Oh, okay. So we're getting to more Green Goblin. So that's cool. Aw, uh, dude, yeah. I love Venom. Venom's such a good character. Like, I just... He's like one of my favorite Spider-Man villains. I don't know how I feel about the Tom Hardy movie coming out because, like, it's not going to be connected to the MCU. These are the Dark Avengers, and that's actually Norman Osborn as Iron Patriot. And this is when they started acknowledging that Menace was a female because Menace is pregnant. I think she's pregnant with Norman Osborn's baby. Like, it started getting really weird. American Son. I'm pretty sure that's Harry Osborn. Oh, and uh, one more thing. This is one of my favorite issues. This is Spider-Man number 600. It's uh, Alex Ross. He does really good artwork. And that's just, you know, Dr. Octopus with like multiple arms. Oh, and then MJ after 600, like she started making an appearance back into Peter's life. And uh, yeah, these are like really, this is good artwork. Honestly. Yep, there's there's a ton of MJ artwork after 600. MJ. MJ. Then MJ gets jealous because Black Cat's in the picture now. Black Cat. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. There's a story behind this one. So, when I was collecting these comics, it was like 2008 or 2009. And I was a kid, okay, I was like 13 or 14, and my dad, he would used to go to the comic store to pick these up for me, and I remember, I don't know if there was an argument between him and my mom, but like, this started something. I can't remember what it was, but he picked it up at the comic store, and he was like, Corbin, this is a little risque. I'm like, it's, it's okay, it's just a cover art. <laughs> There's a story, I swear. Cool. Cool. Oh, yeah, and this is like something that people typically see online is um, Spider-Man and Deadpool working together. Like, that's artwork that people see online. Uh, oh, yeah, this is a variant edition comic. Six, 612, yeah. I gotta go online to see if I can find the original issue because, like, I don't know. Like, I, I hate having variant editions of comics. I like having the first printings. And this was, like, Electro. So, Electro is pretty sweet. I don't like the movie interpretation of Electro. I think Jamie Foxx is a great actor, but, like, I don't know what they did with that character. Pretty nice. Sandman. This is one of those issues where they acknowledge that Sandman had a daughter. Like, Spider-Man 3. And Sandman would do anything to protect his daughter. This is the Rhino. Uh, this is a pretty sad issue because, like, I think the Rhino loses his wife in this issue. And then he starts going, like, ballistic and crazy. Uh, Mephisto. What the hell? Why do I have two of these issues? What the hell? That's weird. Um, okay. So, Mephisto. Right here. And, uh... What is going on here? Why do I have two of these issues? That's so weird. I don't know. Um, oh yeah, I don't, I don't exactly remember what happened, but I think Mephisto like tricked Spider-Man into thinking that he killed people or something. It's been a long time. Mephisto... Oh, and this is, I think, another... Yep, Mr. Negative. He's going to be in the new Spider-Man game. Uh, Black Hat. Oh, this is that vampire dude. I can't remember his name. I think it starts with an M. It's been such a long time since I've read these comics. Oh, okay. And this is kind of relevant. The, uh, you know, this is one of those Vulture comics. I think it's the new Vulture. Yeah, it's the... Uh, what is it? The, I don't know. It's like the gauntlet. It's like a, uh... Story arc. So yeah, there was a new vulture at one point. Oh, I think this is where the rhino's wife died. I'm not sure. It's been a long time. And then I think Spider-Man feels guilt afterwards or something. We're almost done with these comics. <laughs> Juggernaut. Oh yeah, and this was like a... a 
the cosmic entity or whatever, like Spider-Man's gotten these powers before where like he becomes one of the most powerful people in the universe and he becomes this guy. Cosmic Spider-Man, yeah. I guess you can call him Cosmic Man or whatever. I, I am not sure, to be perfectly honest. All right, so we've got more Juggernaut. We've got the Lizard. Now, this guy's artwork, yeah, it, it works for this because, you know, the Lizard's such a wild creature. So I will appreciate this guy's artwork uh, when it comes to stuff like this, like when it involves the Lizard and everything. Because, my God, dude, look at this artwork. That's crazy. That's so cool. All right. The Lizard. More Rhino. Oh, I remember this story arc. It was like where all the animal villains came together and tried to defeat Spider-Man. It was like Kraven and everything, and that was the Gauntlet storyline. So this was pretty interesting. Yep, we got more Kraven. We've got more Kraven, or Zombie Kraven. I don't remember this. Oh, uh, One Moment in Time. I like this story arc because it was right after uh, One More Day and it w it explained what happened after One More Day and, you know, a, a brand new day. It explained the story arc between Spider-Man and MJ and why they're not together anymore. So it explained that. Like, people were wondering, like, hey, what the hell happened between Spider-Man and MJ? So that was, like, a really interesting thing to and these like this artwork right here is pretty memorable because it's like you know it shows that these people really do care about each other oh and this is this was really interesting let me let me show you guys so it was like you know sometimes in comic books they like put the comics together and everything so yeah these like all connected to each other I like comic books like that, where like they all connect and everything. I thought that was really cool of them to do. And then this is like where they started a new entire story arc, uh, Big Time. So Big Time was pretty cool. I'm just gonna put that right there. And Hobgoblin was becoming more of a thing. Those were all the Spider-Man comics I read as a kid, like fully and like really remember. Everything else at that point, I, I kind of stopped reading comics for a while because it was so focused on high school. And what I would end up doing is I would collect the comics and I would try to read them later, but I just didn't have time. But I still collected the comics because I like Spider-Man. So this next portion is just going to be the comics that I've collected over the years and just showing you the, the artwork because I know this video is probably going to be like really long. But, you know, I just wanted to show you the artwork and everything. You know, I don't know why I didn't turn this light on. Let me just see if I can do that. There you go, that's probably gonna be much better. Okay, so this, these are really cool. I know these are probably gonna be worth some amount of money. Not that. Uh, these are the, God. I don't know if turning the light on was a good idea because it's shining off the comics, but these are the Ultimate Spider-Man, all new Spider-Man comics. These are when Miles Morales took over as Spider-Man in the Ultimate Comics line. And uh, it was pretty cool. Was, why is there a Thor comic? That's weird. I think people really, really like Miles Morales, and they've been wanting him to be in the movies for a while. But I don't really want that, because that means that like they would have to kill off Peter Parker. Or maybe he, they could just work together like they are in this issue right here. Because Miles Morales actually meets the um, Marvel Universe Peter Parker, so that was really cool. And this is the death of Spider-Man. This is actually probably like a huge issue. I should probably get like a cover back, because... This might cost a lot of money. I don't know. I know this is probably worth a lot of money. This is the uh, all-new Spider-Man number one. So I've got that covered up because that might be worth some money. And uh, I've just got more. Like issue two. Issue ten. Yeah, you guys can tell at this point I'm just going through the art and everything. Like I don't really have time to like go through everything on these comics. So, oh, there we go. It was out of focus real quick, but yeah, I like Miles Morales as Spider-Man. I think he's a really good Spider-Man. Um, and this was before uh, Spider-Man died. 
this was the Ultimate Comics line. For some reason, they gave him like really long hair. I don't know why they did that. Here we've got some old artwork. I'm assuming this is from like either the 80s or 90s. 50 years of Marvel. Okay, yeah, so this is uh, 1991. So that's really cool. And I think I got like some older art in here as well. Yeah, here we go. Like I said, these were all art that like my parents got for me. They just thought, oh, it's Spider-Man, he'll like it. But I don't really read old comics. I mean, sometimes I do. Venom and Carnage. Carnage, I'm not sure. Is this the first appearance of Carnage? I don't think so. I think this was like just a Carnage storyline. I don't think Carnage first appeared in this. But if he did, that's cool. That's awesome. More comics. I'm trying to figure out if like I should show you guys all of these comics. Oh, and this is like, again, this is like before the uh, One Last Day story arc where it was like Spider-Man in black. Friendly Neighborhood Spider-Man. That was a thing. Like it's, um, there was a lot of iterations of Spider-Man. Like there was the Friendly Neighborhood Spider-Man. The Sensational Spider-Man. The Amazing Spider-Man. The Spectacular Spider-Man. Ultimate Spider-Man. Like, there was so many Spider-Mans. So, there was that. And then, hold on a second. There was, oh wait, this is the uh, Obama edition that I have. It's the third printing though. This is when like Obama came into office. So that's really cool. I do have that still, sweet. Um, and let's see here, they, they started something else. There was the, uh, which, yep. The Superior Spider-Man. This is where I was just like, okay, I'm done. This is stupid. This is getting stupid. Uh, so basically what happened was um, Doc Ock took over as Spider-Man. Like he was in Peter Parker's mind. Uh, that's that's just Amazing Spider-Man. My bad. That's a uh, spinoff. See, Web of Spider-Man. There's all these different series. And, um, you know, it was just like Superior Spider-Man where Doc Ock was Spider-Man. I did not approve. I was like... What are your what are you guys thinking? It wasn't overall Marvel, it was Dan Slott. He was the author of Spider-Man. So I was like, what are you doing? There's his name right there. I hate you. <laughs> I don't know if he's still writing the comics today or not. I I don't see Marvel letting him do that. Because that's just like, why would you do that to Spider-Man? That's just silly. What the hell? Yep, Doc Ogg. You can see like how he breaks that line. I'm not, I haven't read these, I just collected them for the sake of Spider-Man comics. I might read them someday, but I was just like, so upheld of the idea that like Doc Ock would be Spider-Man. And then obviously that caused like some controversy between him and the Avengers because it wasn't Peter Parker. And yep, there's that. Superior Spider-Man, you suck! And then he versus the lizard, or it works with the lizard, I don't know. Um, Superior Spider-Man. Oh, we've got another all new Ultimate Spider-Man. I'll just put that over there. Ugh, with the Ultimates. And this was uh, Scarlet Spider. This was like um, one of Spider-Man's clones. They try to do an issue with that. There were so many Spider-Man issues. I was like, damn, bro. You've got, like, you gotta be kidding me. Again, with the sensational Spider-Man. Uh, this was when Spider-Man, like, had his iron suit during Civil War. The one that Tony Stark provided him. So that's just a random issue. Another superior Spider-Man issue. My god. What were they thinking? This was... Amazing Spider-Man. This was Brand New Day. I don't know what this was. I think this was just a standalone issue. It says number one, so, I mean, don't really care about that that much. Oh, it was another one. I don't know what these were. Like, I don't remember. I think they were just, like, short stories put in the one comic. Um, okay, and this was right after they uh, did Superior Spider-Man. Uh, they brought Peter Parker back, so, and... You can tell this was like around 2014 
and this was with Electro, so you can tell like this was at this point they were trying to do like what the movies were doing. They were just they were just trying to promote the movies basically. They didn't really care about like the comics anymore. They just really wanted the movies to be good. So yeah, this is when they brought back Peter Parker. I think I have the first issue here. Is it here? Um, that's Ultimate Spider-Man. That's actually really funny artwork. So it's just now occurring to me that this video is probably going to be very, very long. So I'm just going to like skip through these comics basically. Um, just to show you guys what I have. Uh, let's see here. This is for kids. I don't really care about that much. Free comic day every first Saturday or second Saturday of May. I can't remember. This is during the Secret Invasion storyline where scrolls started taking over. This wasn't even about Spider-Man. This was about Jackpot. Uh, don't know what this was. This was a one-shot. Again, Jackpot. Venom. I don't even think I read that. Friendly Neighborhood Spider-Man. Sensational Spider-Man. Web of Spider-Man. The Amazing Spider-Man. Spider-Verse with Secret Wars. Oh my god. There's so much to talk about. Then all the Spider-Man started coming together in the Spider-Verse. Spider-Man, Ultimate Spider-Man, Clone Spider-Man, Spider-Woman, even the frickin' Superior Spider-Man. It was getting crazy, guys. It was getting crazy. They they just were like, at this point, screw it, we're just gonna have all the Spider-Mans out there. Oh my god! Oh, and this is the uh, first issue of Superior Spider-Man with Dr. Octopus. The cover's cool, it's just that knowing that it's Dr. Octopus, it sucks! Another Amazing Spider-Man issue. Sensational Spider-Man, Spider-Man with the iron suit. Amazing Spider-Man one-shot. It was a short for Halloween. Time Storm. I think this is where they were like, hey, let's put Spider-Man in Spider-Man 2099 together, that's what's up. People will like that. This is where Stan Lee meets Spider-Man. So that's cool. I'm having so many regrets of doing this because there's just so much to talk about. Uh, it's another Ultimate Spider-Man comic, but you see his, his hair. His hair is just so long. This was, again, another Spider-Man comic. I don't know why I have two of these. What the hell? <laughs> did, did I just not keep track of my comics? Um, this is one where he worked with Miss Marvel, so that's cool. This is one where he like... Oh, it's Spider-Girl. I guess this one was in the future. I don't know. This is another superior Spider-Man issue. Amazing Spider-Man again. There's just so much. There's so much, guys. There's so much. There's so much. The light, I'm sorry. Okay, so here's further proof that I haven't even hit the iceberg yet. Oh, God. <laughs> okay. Oh, man. This... Oh, they're everywhere. They're everywhere. Oh, God. Um, okay. More electronic suits. Spider-Man with great power. This was a storyline where, like, they explored what happened before Uncle Ben was killed, where he was pretty much a dick. Uh, this was cool. This is where Peter Parker came back after the Doc Ock storyline. And, oh god, these are all gonna fall. These are all comics that, like, I have somewhat read, but, I don't know. It's been a while. Oh god, there's so much here. Um, this is where, like, the Human Torch died in the comics, but he's back to life because, hey, it's, they're comic books. And Peter Parker took over in the FF, so that was a... Interesting storyline. Yeah, guys, I have all of these comics, and, like, I love Spider-Man to death. It's just, like, I I want to keep these comics, but I have, just, I have so much. Like, I might as well just keep them, to be perfectly honest. 
I'm still collecting today. I'm collecting the new Amazing Spider-Man series. I don't know how I feel about it, though, because it's, like, not the original Spider-Man route. It's, um, you know, it's Peter Parker as, like, a billionaire. He's basically Tony Stark now. Um, so there's that. Um, yep. Oh, the Vulture. That holds some relevancy. Uh, Dan Slott, you've ruined us all. This, these are the comics that were before uh, Doc Ock took over as Spider-Man. And let's see here. I know there's more. I know there's more. Oh, God. Yep, there is. <laughs> it, it's funny that I even have, like, comics of Spider-Man going into outer space. What the hell? <laughs> so there's that. Dr. Octopus. Damn it, Dr. Octopus. I hate you. Yep. You can tell that I'm just tired at this point because I'm just going through these comics and I just, I have so much. I, I, <laughs> hold on. I literally thought this was going to be such a fun video, but it's not anymore. It's so not fun and I just, I want to go home. Wait, I am home. Oh, uh, God. So there's that. The lizard. There's so much. Can I just move this here? There we go. Yep. Lizard. There's so much. Um, this is when Doc Ock was in a coma. He says Peter Parker because it signifies that this is actually Peter in Doc Ock's body. Yep. And this is when they started doing the digital copies. And this is Amazing Spider-Man number 700. It's a really, really cool, like, cover because it shows, like, if you look closely, it's Spider-Man, Venom, all of Spider-Man's friends, and it forms into this one comic. But the problem is, is that in this issue, Doc Ock takes place as Spider-Man. So that's the one thing that I hate about it. The cover is great. It's one of my favorite covers, but the story, no. <laughs> um, and would you look at that? That's every one of my comics. Oh my God, that was so much work. Jesus, I have so much to clean up. My God. My god. See so yeah, you guys, that was all of my Spider-Man comics. I hope you enjoyed this video. I know it was a super long video. I, I don't even know if you guys stay till the end. Jesus. <laughs> but yeah, I just thought I'd do this like really cool video where like I showed off my comics because you know Spider-Man Homecoming is coming out next week. And I thought it was just gonna be super fun, but it actually turned out to be like really annoying because I had to like go through all these comics. It was it was fun to an extent, just like you know, going through the nostalgia of all these comics, but this was really hard work. Uh, so if you'd like to see more vlogs, just, you know, subscribe. Comment down below what you thought of these comics. Like, tell me which one was your favorite. And yeah, that's pretty much it. That was all my Spider-Man comics. I am Corbett Stuckey, and thank you for watching.